Okay, well, let's start about uh, let's start a photo review of the first map with the rundown of the um, compositions. Big differences, right? We have um, the controllers are the same. We have Astra versus Astra, which is common on this map because of the uh, just how big the map is. Uh, but there, the similarities are ending essentially. Right? We have a huge difference. Uh, an approach to the game because we have a secondary controller uh, who is Mako, is like, kind of like a sentinel because Viper doesn't have the passive information gathering like Seth and Sentinel, but she has the um, recurring ability to just wall off, smoke off passages and so on. And also on attack, she's able to permanently use the wall to build up lurk um, or uncert uncertainty on the opposing team while BBL has the uh, has the Killjoy for the permanent passive info and additional uh, post plant, kind of similar to Viper. Uh, but the ultimate serves an initiation purpose, which is which cannot be said to the same degree about Viper. Then both teams are presenting a Sova, which main reason to play Sova in my eyes on this map is actually the, you know, the ability to destroy utility on double doors with the shock dot. I feel like uh, you can think of, oh, yeah, you know, the drone is very good. This drone is great for clearing A main, B main, uh, or clearing art. But I feel like the shock does actually have the most uh, value against a team who's running a sentinel, uh, like a like a cipher, killjoy, or even chamber, right? And uh, I'm expecting, I was expecting when I was watching this match live that the Rx will have lineups for that, and I wasn't wrong. Now, when you when you want to f uh, check the, the uh, check the uh, values of uh, characters, by the way, you can always just go to my compendium. You will find this on my YouTube as well, um, and just check those uh, like primary roles and so on. Because so far, in my eyes, utility destruction is the secondary role, but it's still like so important on this map to have that pressure build up on the double doors. And there's there's gonna be so many things happening here uh, with that as well. Now, when it comes to the uh, duelists, of course, there's a huge, huge difference here. Kushner goes with the Yoru. And Buzz goes with the standard Jet. Jet, you know, we all know how she builds up uh, space um, on attack with the dash, while Kushner can be similar to some degree with the TP, but requires a little bit more coordination because he doesn't have a smoke for himself. Um, and of, But, of course, there's an upside of having the three flashes at his disposal. Now... I wasn't expecting much from the Yoru, and as you will see in the in the vote review, the Yoru wasn't really well played, but it is what it is. Let's jump in into the first round. Is this the maximum? Yeah, the quality on YouTube is not the best. So, um, the first pistol round, DRX is just going for mid control. Three players going mid, two players with the spike going into A main. Uh, but they are, in general, the players from A main are more passive because one, they're in minority, there are two players going into A main, and they're waiting for the pressure to be built up from those two um, directions. So they will make players either push out into their arms to get the free kills or will force rotations, and maybe the players from Ard will communicate how many players they see. Yoru had been getting a, a little bit of a early info and then TP'd out. But that's about it. That was just off a bit of a peek into A main. But they might have pulled the trigger just a little too early there because now there's Yeah, now the breach is now back on the A side. Looks like a bit of an A split just being set up. Honestly, Switch need just holding that angle. The thing is, the UX has no sentinel like with true passive info. And uh BBL, I can't remember exactly. When I was watching like the the in the um the match itself, I can't remember exactly how many times BBL was aggressive on flanks. They should have been more aggressive against against the flanks, but definitely not with singular players. Well, the arrow wasn't spotted at all. And that Sova arrow brings so much value in here right now. The thing is this is like this is a, such a nuts um nuts clutch right here. Like the Kildred didn't do anything wrong uh, when it comes to the timing of the peak, you know? Like, DRX were on the ropes here. Like, they got smushed, they didn't destroy the Sova Arrow, and they lost just because of that, because two players just got completely dismantled, right? The Viper Wall was already, like, buying space, but the opponents were actually using the Viper Wall from DRX to their own advantage. 
Kind of just Obi just clutched it, you know, which is very nice for DRX, but this was actually one on the back of a clutch, right? What are your thoughts on Eden on your own pearl against Team Heretics? Oh, it's really good. Way better than this one. Is that Viper Wall from Art good? Yeah, I think so. I think so, it just got countered by the arrow, you know, which is a big thing. Look, in general, when DRX is gonna do their own vote reviews, like this this round is definitely gonna be one of those rounds when they definitely feel they didn't play correctly and uh, they just won because they got lucky, you know? Now, you can see here, uh, there's a Viper Wall already used we unfortunately didn't see exactly when it was used because it's like actually okay seven seconds yeah we don't see exactly when it was used i'm assuming it was used at the beginning of the barrier so it's like uh, even like, like 35 seconds during the the countdown and this is gonna be something that is gonna be used a lot like this viper wall that you guys see here is essentially um, making it possible to attack this side without a singular smoke on site, and instead the Astra can go for the stuns and pulls and use the other, um, other more flexible smokes for other positions on the map. Because the most important when when going to the side is like this angle here to smoke this off. Like this is the most important angle. You have to smoke off top. You have to smoke off CT, and then you can fight the backside with flashes. Um, uh, you can ba uh, fight the backside with mollies as well, while Heaven and CT cannot be really done uh, uh, with, the, with this kind of utility because the angles are just not favorable for that. So that Viper Wall uh, is actually very valuable and uh, with, with combination of the fake smokes and long B from Astro will allow it to build up pressure even when they're not going there. The hey Alexandra, how are you doing? A lot on Shock Durt! Yo, Alexandra, thank much for the two, 41 months with the tier 2. Welcome back. That's a long time. Alright, five players going into B. I really like the fact that DRX just goes together completely. Also, the buy. Uh, ah, that's another thing that I want to... Spell. Oh my god, this triggered me so much when I was watching it live. This triggered me so much when I was watching it live. My friends, look at BBL's. Look at BBL's buy. Look at this. Not a single person has utility on an eco round. Like, that's crazy. The amount of mistakes like this that I see from pro teams is just bonkers. You know? Like, that is, that is insane. There's absolutely zero reasons to not buy shock darts, to not buy a drone, to not buy aftershock, to not buy a flash, to not buy flashes on your as well. Zero reasons. Because pay attention to what's going to happen on round three. If, if the plan was to never buy this utility, I, I agree with not buying it round two. But if, if Turco, Sushi, and Kushner will buy those, then that means that they, they, this round they made a mistake. And this is, not, this is not something that I see rarely. This is, something that, this is a huge mistake that I see from many, many, many good teams in general. Because the, my point is, you are transferring the utility that you didn't use to the next round and you don't have to use the utility if you don't need to but you can have at your disposal right so if by any chance you get insanely lucky on round two right and suddenly there's a chance you can use the utility to convert the round you will have it but if you don't buy it but you still have the cash well that you never have the chance to convert it right remember a bit of a week goodbye just the eco BBL, Brave is holding up close and personal. It's gonna have to get. Man, I wish oh, they had oh, replay oh. system because there's so much utility being used here by DRX and we can't really show it directly. So the thing is, look, we see Astra Pool backside, right? That's one thing. Then we're gonna see um, a recon arrow to check backside B as well in the corridor. We're gonna see a molly in this corner. Like, all of this is being covered, and I I'm certain that we're gonna see, like, other utility being used as well. The side dash from Buzz, as you can see, he is dashing this direction, but this is his, this is, those are, those are the eyes. The eyes will be in this direction. That means that he is able to check for the Astra position and give that info. He's like an additional scouting 
um, right now. That's something that every single jet should be doing while doing that. See? Buzz yeah. literally saw the Astra and he's backside now. Pushing with that molly and arrow to control that space. Not checked in this position yeah, not checked though. at all. Look at him still up close behind the box. An opportunity. Yeah, well, the angle's being held anyway. Did stop and deny that plant. And he's bought time for the rest of his team to come back in to this one. Stun as well in play. Buzz just has to back away. Moment, but just two Good positioning by the other players while the Viper was planting, so she wasn't left alone. Remember that the Viper wall s stays up 15 seconds. Anyway. We have yet to see Hello, Geronimo. any of the crazy stuff that BBL have surely cooked up for some of these gun rounds. That's what you think, right? They, they must do. I see this comp and it just gives me flashbacks to Paper X playing it on bind, you know, something similar at least. Well, Where the the Paper X Yoru on bind was very aggressive, very in your face, yeah. always forced you to react to it. I think that Pearl might be too big of a map to sure. be able to run that kind of style. I don't agree but with I, that I statement. I'm intrigued to see what game plan he's got. It seems like, just from a theoretical point of view, you get most value just from using rotate gate crashes. But that doesn't sound interesting enough. Will you be doing watch parties on days when DRX will be hang out on other days? I have no plans right now. I'll be honest with you, we'll see. Are you going to celebrate the Fat Thursday with some punch keys? I actually forgot that today is Fat Thursday, so I didn't buy anything. I've seen Sean guys talk about how no, how Valorant fans are not really good at using their minimap to their advantage. They think sideways Dash is another example of utilizing it. That has nothing to do with the minimap. Like it's about it's about the jet seeing players and communicating with other players. You shouldn't be looking at the minimap in those situations. Good morning, Effie. Going all the way, slipping to the back of their spawn, over towards A. And there's a turret here that'll take contact with Sochni, maybe droning on. Wait, what did they miss? What can they cook up now? See the beginning of this in this event. Early silver arrow for A control. From both sides. And DRX now learned about the lineup that BBL is being is using. And KO from defense cleared out with the dagger, but I think that was way too early. Because it was meant also for A main, but it didn't really have good range. So that's kind of awkward. Like that, that like, as you can see, DRX essentially did the the pistol strat, right? Five players yeah. to respond to this A split if it does come through. And the BBL is really prepped here. They're like they completely abandoned B side. This is a really good read from BBL. Flash play comes down. Wall dropped as well. Very similar to the prior round. The same play being made. Dash across. Buzz is. You know, deep within the site, but it is being covered again. It's at the back of the site. The BBL players. And this is a like this is this is a true overheat moment. Like, look, it's a it's a four v two, right? Four v two. Why on earth are you even pushing this? Like, there's absolutely zero reasons for that. Like, you know, deep within the site, but it is being covered again. It's at the back of the site. The BBL players. You can argue that, oh, no, it's not, it's not a mistake because they double peaked. But you can literally say that, well, there's no reason to for them to be aggressive because the team, the opposing team wasn't even close to the side. Like, they, they killed everyone. You know? So it's like, you can say that this is in the heat of the moment, right? How players will play. But I feel like this is the this is something that people need to learn. Like most of the mistakes that are happening at pro level are because of lack of patience. They realize that it's just completely open and that they can go back here. And this almost looks like a save round for BBL, but I think they'll give it a, a give it a good college try. See if they can find a pick early on. But otherwise it would be devastating to lose both of these rifles. How do they want to play this one? Is close onto this corner. It's all about how you clear it. The jet shouldn't be necessarily looking at the minimum in that solution helps the other knows exact positioning. As the jet's dashing sideways. She is the player that should have good comms and talking about it. But this is this is a really good example, by the way. Here. Look, let's take a look at it again. It's a 2v2, right? And this is such a good bait. Like Viper just holds that first angle, right? You can look at the Astra position as well. Um, 
Let's look at it again. The smoke cuts off the Astra. Viper takes the angle like really deep. She's alerted on the position before they even go onto site. And that's also like kind of the, the problem with the Phantom here. Like, I know the leg is sticking out, right? But uh, we don't see it early. But but in many situations, the Phantom is going to be sticking out so much earlier than this. But look, he has 5 HP. He plays for the info. And then when he misses the shot, he's not repeaking. The, the instinct tells him, right? The instinct. Instantly, he picks up the molly, goes back, buys time. And Abi picks of the moment when they would expect the Viper to repeak. And he gets an easy kill because that distracted with the Viper. Right? And now in a 2v, 2v1, this is where the patient comes in. Look, RB just sits in the corner and he's never peeking because he knows that if he peeks, he is fully exposed and there's most likely no chance that RB will trade him because with the 5 HP, there's a high chance that he will actually just push him, uh, push his uh, teammate into a very, very bad position, you know? star superstar player for drx in 2023 as well he's just always there i mean look at the face there's no reaction to these plays happening they're all just expected he just is so my friends the thing about the minimap remember the minimap is a supplement the the goal for the pro players is to never look at the minimap unless you really really have to the comms are the important aspect of the game for the pro players. And the communication level from the pro players should be on, on such on uh, uh, on such an advanced um let's say level again, uh that the player's communication should be building up the image in in your teammate's mind without checking the minimap. Because if you look at the minimap while doing an execute, you're being distracted. And that's not something that you want to do as a pro player. You want your teammates to speak. You want your teammates to give you the info. And the job of a player who is side dashing as a jet is to communicate if he saw anyone. And that's about it. You know? Calm and collected in every moment. And that's a bonus round converted for DRX. Even when BBL had a good read on the site. Man, the quality of YouTube is just so bad. It's holy crap insane. I would love to do the vote review of a Twitch uh Twitch VOD, but it's like when I when I pause the Twitch VOD, it gets gray. So you can't really pause it. How does a jet come where the Astro was? You can just see the end of the minimap and spam it. What are you talking about? The jet dashes sideways, tells Astro close right side. That's it. That's everything you need. Or Astro default. Or Astro uh, top side. Or one top side. That's, you don't need to say Astro. You know? But just contact plays. And DRX are getting some great information off of this. The fact that nobody's here. Nobody's Again, home. see? Look. You don't watch the minimap here. Like the players that are close, the KO, uh the the uh the KO, the 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 Sova, they're they're never gonna look at this minimap. They have to be prepped, they need to be watching the site, they need to be having their guns out, right? When the dash will happen. And the and the jet, when she goes into sight. She's side dashing like this. She doesn't see anyone. She checked both. Do you see this? Look. Right side. Left side. You see how much space she gathers? That's so important right here. You're checking every single angle by the jet. She didn't see the breach right here because she's with the back, right? But that's not a problem because the Viper wall will cut off that player. And they will most likely hear the shot anyway. The Viper can also communicate it based on the minimap info as well, guys. She can, but it's not it shouldn't be by default because if you have five players alive and they're all close to the map, uh, close to the site, 
no one is going to look at the minimap, my friends. Remember, there's no point in like uh, arguing with me about this because this is just how we play as a pop player. And I can tell you that. You don't have a guy on, on minimap duty. You count on do communications on your pro players because that's the way you should play. If you're dead or, if you, or you know you don't have a task at hand right now, you will look at the minimap and communicate for the players who are close to the side. But that's not a job. Comps are more important than the actual minimap. Pro players will, look at, they will not look at the minimap unless they have to. Nobody's home. Life is good, stun. That was actually a good vision of the execute. Nobody's home. So this is this is uh, the the same execute that they did before here. Um, so we have seen pull over here, recon arrow landing here, Molly landing here. I don't think the viper was close to use it, but that that was the plan before, right? Viper wall cuts off this position and this position, and the players from um, from Beeling are affected by the viper wall as well. So they might they might actually peek with the DK out. Which is very important. Knife is good. Stunned to try and disrupt that as a. In the back of Hawes was just being. It's so out. hard to Stacks stop this. The plan out in the open, facing away just in case a flash does come over the side. That Hawes control going to be very important to hold on to. Buzz at a slight off angle now. And it's a really open plant too. That's going to be Hello, interesting Kakarot. if they try that in the gun rounds as well. Wow. But the, the crossfighters and the better weapons here are just going to be way too easy for DRX to clean up. Very fast reactions from Buzz to be able to dodge that flash coming through. That is that prime gaming flawless. And I'm Let me make some notes here. Harold, round four. Vision of B exit. So do they try that again? And crucially, does Kushina try to stop them? Because in the previous round, he was using his gate crash a little bit like a chamber TP. What do I think about the defense Yoro? Well, it was definitely one of the better Yoros I've seen him pro play. Still not the level that I would expect from a Yoro. Like this, this, this gives you like no value. What B, what Kushina did here is like, dude, what what the hell? You you gained nothing. This is like how how a player acts who doesn't have a lot of experience in Yoro. Look. You, you're getting the info. You just started the ultimate. You still have so much time on the counter, right? You see two players. You see three more. You see five players. Look. Look at the timer. Look at this. He just started it. And his reactions go, oh, I go back. All of this time could have been used. All of this time could have been used get him more info, or do even, like, co like confusion plays, right? Even if you don't go for the kill on a shorty or a stinger, you, what you can do here, right? What are the other options as a oh, Euro yeah. player here? What you can do is, let's, let's, let's go back here, right? He starts the ultimate, he sees all five players. This is the moment when you see five players, is to utilize your value more. Because right now, when you can still give the info on the position of the plants during this moment, your teammates can gather space. Imagine if the Yoru still, still gives you info about the players being mid and so on, and the players on A side, they can push into A main, they can maybe go into mid, the player from B can just play retake, um, the killer can reposition herself as well. All of that be just because the Yoro will be able to transfer the information about the player's positions for the next five seconds, right? Also, even if you don't want to fight, you still have access to some place as a Yoro. Because now, when you're super fast in the ult, you can still go here, right? You can still go uh, onto like the position in spawn. You can see where the op opposing players are going. And then when you know that, uh, for example, let's say that the players, the three players here are going into link. What if, if you ask a Yoru, you just run in like this and you TP out from this position, you make a sound and then TP back to site over A. So now the opposing players have to recheck if the Yoru is actually in window or not. What if you just go into A main 
exit the ult here in safe space because you know that you're going to be faster than the opponents and will be able to just make the confusion play and then TP to A. Your opponents again have to clear everything. But if you just TP out right here, well then they don't hear the TP out, but they know that you stopped making noise and they he, you disappeared with, with the blue aura. So yeah, hello. Like you just lost a lot of potential value. So th this is like quite disappointing to see. Drift going to be popped off here. And that's just aware a, of this, just getting some information, essentially just a, a human drone. Yeah. yeah. No, no value, essentially. And using the ult for that information. But the question from DRX is, where's he gone? <laughs> because he could have <laughs> gate crashed over to A. Or could even go for two kills on those two calls? No, no. There's no way he could have gone for two kills on those two calls. There's no way. He didn't, like, he had a full one second, uh, one second, um, Equip time. At least the A players got it, got it the space on A main a little bit, but that's about it. You know? Alright, is it the same execute? Let's see. Yes. It is the same execute. So we have the pull, we have the um we have the arrow backside, and we have snake bites at some point. There's the dash, only right side checked. No one has been seen. Max three people here just shot. Yoru gets discovered by the recurrent arrow. Like, it seems like BBL didn't adjust, like, at all. Like, okay, Yoru is yeah, completely caught off guard right actually. now. See? Like, he had to like, just abandon hope, and the Astra is now alone in backside. Oh, on side, on the other. The back away and <laughs> an it was a little bit yeah, awkward, right but... There, yeah. Wait, how many bullets did Buzz have? Peninsula, yeah. Nine bullets! Right yeah, that, that reload Peninsula is not necessary. So th this is a little bit, like, Peninsula, awkward yeah. by Buzz, right because he peaks before he gets the reload done. That's a little bit awkward. But it, you know... It is what it is, everyone makes mistakes. This is such a... For stacks, it's such a, such a bad position. Like, uh, you're, you're kind of stuck. You planted the spike. Right, and unfortunately, no one else is alive on the site, so you're left, you're left alone. And the only way of playing in a situation like this, I feel like, is when you're getting stunned out, your your only play is just to peek aggressively, like he did. But he, unfortunately, because of the stun, he he just couldn't do it faster. Did he have any util? He's given a one angle, down to that 1v1, Abi. Holding his ground, a quick tap once more, trying to force the fight. This is so hard. Information gathered, information gained. Abi must just be able to see that he's not on it and... Yeah, but just waiting for the star to come online. In a situation like this, in a 1v1, if you don't get a half, if you don't even try to get a half, there's no way you are winning a round. And remember that this is... <laughs> Dancing up and down yeah. on that elevation, you know, he always gets to see whether or not Sochni's sticking. Like the you really, really, really badly need to get a half diffuse. In most, most pro players go for the tap, which is, I think, is just a bad habit from the CS years that they played. In CS, right? In CS, you have the diffuser pack, right, which lowers the. Uh, the diffusal time. So when you hear that someone's tapping the spike, the attacker has to check if someone is diffusing the bomb because you never have the certainty on how long it will take. In in Valorant, you don't need that because you're, you will always know exactly how long it takes. So taking the half diffuse on the spike is kind of like having the diffuser pack in CS, and you need to use it to your own advantage. And most players are not using it to their own advantage, and are ending up in unwinnable clutches like this. On the flip side, considering this is the first time DRX have played this map, you wouldn't know it, because this is looking drilled. <laughs> it is looking very, very good. Yeah, the stinger nerf is already included the, here. You know, rumors swirling around it's a little bit. Out. It's a little bit weird that we do have the stinger nerf here, but we don't have the killjoy nerf already. Like, I, I would imagine that both of those changes should have been done at the same time, you know? Like, I would imagine that it would be done uh, uh, at the same time, but it is what it is. It, uh, I wanted to tweet, doing a photo review of VCT locking DRX versus BBL.
Wait, what's the... Okay. Wait, no, that's KFC Big Bash League. What the hell? BBL Esports. Here we go. Doing a review of, of BBL versus DRX, Twitch.tv, Roop, Lothar, HS. Alright. Oh, what roster they might be running? Again, very, very. Uh... No, wait, never mind, never mind. My, my mistake. I read the map incorrectly. Let me, let me check again. So, Dagger checked the, the early space. Like, this gives me a lot of confidence. This Dagger gives you a lot of confidence if you need to check the corners or not, but you can still see Buzz being very, very diligent with the pie cutting of the angles. By how much DRX are actually but they didn't have to use any utility apart from the dagger to go into A main, right? There's so much value in that one dagger here. Now let's see what's the plan on the A exit. This is the actual first time since we uh, that we see the team going A since the pistol round. So two stars backside, flower smoke. Well, Brave did play against the jet recovery. position, so he knew about he knew about where the jet will dash. And the pit invested as well. That is so he much holds. respect. Okay, I mean, mm. uh, so I don't like this at all. Like you're using an eight or orb ultimate. In a 4v5 on a lower buy, where again you don't really have a lot of util, like Turco doesn't even have flashes. Like, like, it's tough. Committing this it's like I, I don't see any value in this. I don't know. I don't know. This, 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 this is this is this is a huge win for D-Rex. I know that they use the Viper Pit f to guarantee, like, but, sorry, not to guarantee. Let me explain this in in a, in a, this way. I don't mind the Viper's Pit on this round because in Valorant, every round is so, so important. And you want to guarantee a round win against an Eco because if you throw just because you didn't use a, some piece of utility that you had at your disposal, it just feels like a waste, right? So you want to snowball this. You want to snowball into winning rounds. And this is why this Viper's Pit is so important to get value. Also, Viper Spit really is tough to use effectively in a lot of rounds because it's dictated by the um, by the opponents essentially, right? You 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 only get value out of the Viper Spit when you have the sight typically on attack, and that's not happening every single round. So you want to use it as, as soon as you have the opportunity to use it. Flying. Hello, Divushka. Investing into this round when economy is not quite ideal. And this is again a good example of. The Yoru didn't even try here. The Yoru put a TP. You can see it here. Through the Viper Spit. But he just faked it. It's like, okay. Investing into this round when like, the not you have one flash. And you sacrifice the Sova ult. Unfortunately, Breach didn't buy any flashes the entire round. So he just he faked TP and that that's right. it. And those are the rounds, by the way, on Ecos, those are the rounds where no one will blame the Yoru for trying to do, like, stupid stuff, you know? Wait, I am not wrong of, of, of Breach not buying any, any flashes this round, right? Let me check. Yeah, look at this. Breach has no flashes bought. This is the same problem that we have seen in round two. And he buys the flashes the next round, right? Let me check. Yeah, and he buys two flashes here in this round. Like, oh wait, he actually sold one because he doesn't have that much cash. But it's still, like, it's so crazy to me that the, that the players are not optimizing this. Look, it's crazy to me. Alright, this is the lineup. So, look, this is so important. Like, using this lineup, I feel like this should have been utilized a little bit earlier as well. And there should be a lineup from this position as well, but I didn't see it being used. But there's, there's the lineup from from B main, right? So you essentially do a shock dart that goes into this position and destroys the llama bot, which is huge value. Huge value. You use it similarly on on Ascent. Uh, it, it's insane. And here you go. And you know, it's, it's also 
I'm not actually not certain why is being the smoke used here with the snake bite. I feel like the, the smoke kind of puts a, doesn't allow you to, to get a kill here. But I like the combo because if someone is peeking into, into double dose, right? If someone is aggressive from the defenders going here, he goes into a trap. He goes into a snake bite. He gets affected by it, falls back, and he goes into the shock that with the debuff on the double damage. So this serves like a double purpose, right? We have a double purpose of this. Essentially, what DRX is doing is using two pieces of utility to gather early space and have certainty that no one is standing in this corner at all. And potentially, maybe, once on Blue Moon, getting a kill. Nice shock dart. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Hey, clear that utility that's going to be used. Airfro, thank you so much for the 10 months. Welcome back, buddy. How are we doing? Look at this aggressive gate crash. This is nice, though. After shock onto the corner. Uh, but here he is. The angle, and here it is. Yeah. Well. This was a good this was a good coordinated play by B BBL. So essentially when did he use the uh, the TP? Uh at the early early stages of the round. Then he stays here in the cubby. He waits for the Sova drone and now this is the moment to strike. And this is a good timing. This is a good this is a good play by BBL. This is a good play by BBL because Tuko will stun for that position, right? Wait, he actually used the aftershock first. Then he stuns on the contact, and that's that's pretty good. And now the Yoru has to play passively, right? But unfortunately, the bridge died, so... Yeah, that's the problem. If the bridge wouldn't have died, that would have been a perfect round, but... Uh, outside of stacking the correct sites, which is Bridge died, so this is not worth the effort. And it pays off. Do you think Snake Bite doubles as a utility destroyer? So no, in that position that it was used? I don't think so. Fours. No one is using a Lava Bot in that position anyway. Because it can be destroyed by uh, with the, while picking the double dose. So that Snake Bite purpose is to scare away the player from peeking and then going into the shock that with the debuff. Yeah, this is going to be brutal for him to try and anchor. Smoke's dropped down all over the side to try and split this one up into the art. Split straight through main. All right, I want to see this. Brutal for him to try and anchor. Smoke's dropped down. So, pull on backside. Smoke secret, smoke flowers. Any other pieces of utility that we see? Down. All over the side. Arrow coming in on the top wall here, if I'm not mistaken. I to try and split this one up. And the smoke from the Viper on art. And this is a heads up smoke by uh, heads up smoke by the defenders, but it really doesn't doesn't give them anything if they're <laughs> if they're not playing on side. Maybe that was a misclick. Then I'm not certain. Like I would understand the smoke if you're playing on site, but there's no one on site. So why on earth are you using the smoke? Yeah, this makes no sense. Smoke's dropped down all over the side to try and split this one up into the arts. It's like you put you some uncertainty into the attackers that they need to clear the smoke. So but it's like Huge play inside his own smoke doesn't really give you a lot. Good morning, Clara Bella. Are we gonna have any other answers for it? And taking point, Kushina wraps up the round quite nicely. Fantastic first round to get on the board there from BBL. It cost them a lot, but it was worthwhile. Yeah, they had like the, when you're losing so much, you have to throw everything to win the round. That's the problem with losing so many chained rounds. You feel so much on a on the back foot that you have to have to go for for like everything to secure at least the first round. Sometimes that first round can be the hardest one when it feels like the momentum is against Hello, Dongi. Like DRX. Well, listen, the momentum is not going to stop, though, because Zest and Stacks still have their ults, big ults that can get picks or open up a site completely. You see Aslam Shadow change around his Killjoy setup. Still the alarm bot in the same place. They got shock darted before, but now putting more of a focus towards B. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that... Uh Big ults that can get picks it's kind of interesting that BBL didn't that doesn't adjust the uh, the alarm board in double dose. I feel like before, but 
I, I, I feel like Zest is, uh, should be using that in that choke that lineup a little bit more, but I'm assuming that he's not because he would he would assume that the opponent already ch already changed the alarm board, but they did not. <laughs> He's making all sorts of plays. The gate crash. Bro on the side. That, on the wait, wait, let, let us look at this again. When was the... Okay. So the TP was being used right now. And it's so funny that Buzz literally jumped over the TP. Look, look, look at the minimap. Look at the minimap. The TP, the gate crash from the Yoro from CT, is literally under Buzz right about now. So he cannot see it. And he's not able to communicate that there's the gate crash coming to screens. <laughs> it's so funny. Do I think Yoru will play more, more matches? I don't think so, because teams are not sacrificing that much time. You can watch an episode of Lotus Lab about it. Like, type an exclamation mark Lotus Lab. There's a video that I made about FNS statement and Yoru. But good kill, good kills by BBL. It's like they actually fought. They, this, they didn't play retake on, on B side this time. And that's the way that he should be playing against this. Uh, like they needed to find the way to play against this. Uh, but I, again, dude, I, I really dislike this. Look, the way that did did this retake, right? Look, not retake even, like st stopping the push. This flash is awful. Like, I, if I'm not mistaken, it actually goes off the map. Like, I can't see it, but even if it doesn't go off the map, it flashes backside off screens, so it bounces like... Let me show it to you. It bounces, like, if I'm not mistaken, the flash goes like... here And bounces behind him. So it doesn't really flash anyone. And the smokes from the Astra obscure the vision, so the flash has, like, really no value. Like, if you, if you want to flash from that position as a Yoru, you flash over here, like you flash, th there are many options actually, you flash bounce through the viper wall so it pops in front of the viper wall, right? So then you flash all of this position here and you flash all of this position as well and then you can TP behind the players who are fully flashed or you bounce the flash like this so it explodes over here, it flashes the backside and flashes the default and it flashes screens as well, right? But flashing just like in a straight line over here in screens doesn't achieve you anything. And this, those are the things that you learn by practicing. Because it's hard to make all of those decisions in the heat of the battle. This is all coming from experience when you r repeat and repeat and repeat and you think about the outcome of the flashes that you do. You know? People. Here he comes. I mean, bit of a whiff, honestly, from Zest. Should be favored there, but... Sushi, uh, sorry. The Korean Cast pointed out that the good Viper Smoke Fuel Management with Astra. Wait, what? Korean Cast have pointed out the good Viper Smoke Fuel Management with Astra. It's insane how much pressure they can create with constant smokes up. Yeah, they actually... That's something I didn't talk about. In, in the pistol round, I actually saw, saw that they didn't optimize that. Because the smoke from Astra was this up at the same time as the Viper Wall on, was on B backside. Uh, sorry, on B Heaven. So that wasn't being utilized every run perfectly. But it's like super nitpicky. But it, that's how you want to play with uh, with Viper in general. Quite know if back halls is cleared. All right, that was actually Dude, it's, it's, this is just so nuts. Like, Aslan played off the stun. Buzz had a good opportunity. He just whiffed. Like, some runs are just decided by stuff like this. It's like... I don't think I don't think Aslan should be peeking there, but he did. He diffed the jet. The jet just whiffed, but he they could have just literally killed the killjoy right there, right? From BBL as well, just off that turret contact. But look at where Brave is hiding here. Does he get cleared? Abby has been late lurking this one. Zest is it? 
back and just walks into the line of sight. Phantom Angle. Dift. Vandal Dift. Yeah. Finding the target, still Kushner TPing back, stacks is... Yeah, this, this, there's, there's a lot of, of this like disconnect here from BBL, way. but they get... They get the Executioner, 3k. And the Breach ult used in the 2v1. No, they have to. Again, it's the same stuff. It's the same stuff. They need to use everything to guarantee round wins. This is actually a good example. This is actually a good example by RB Quick Thinking. He knows that most likely they're going to play Crossfire. Either, like, there are possibilities are like this. 90% there's someone standing in this corner, right? And then the second player is going to play Office Contact. And there's a high chance he's either peek from here, 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 or here. The least poss the, the, the smallest possibility is a Flowers because they were taking space on site. So most likely those three are the ones where the when the second player will be peeking of contact from, right? And look look how RB will react. He will peek into the player right here for the first contact, right? The first contact player that is standing on the right side. Then he will literally just do one step backwards and reposition for that repeak on the contact to isolate the angle. It's really well done. All has to do is swing off the See? He was waiting and he actually chose the most possible outcome as well because when he gets the contact, right? He goes back and repositions the crosser placement for the contact player and that, in this case, he is holding the double angle instead of the singular angle, right? So the crosser placement gives him um, the most possible odds, but kudos to Turko here, he actually didn't peek because he saw that there's no more contact anymore and there's contact no need for him to play. Should make it nice and easy, but little offset in the movement there, all like of those little, little, in the round, little things the that you can do to increase the odds of winning rounds are going to pay off at so some point in some play. rounds. Yeah. Now it's out at 13 and 7. He's torn open some of these defaults. And I think sometimes that's one of the best ways to play against DRX. Yeah. Is throw them a curveball, try and, try and throw something hey, strange at them as they're setting up. If you can disrupt their timings, it's those big utility executes that could be so, so scary that you take the bite out of it. Oh, uh, really good, yeah. Yo, Buddha. Thank you very much for the Prime. Welcome back, buddy. How are you doing? No, no, welcome back. This is actually first time. So, Buddha's our DRX director, by the way, if you guys want to know. From Japan. And he's older than me, believe it or not. Yanni Vanili, thank you very much for the prime as well. Welcome back, two months. But it all fell to pieces. This double flank now needs to try and get some value. The, the, everybody from DRX is here. Everybody, all five. Players. This is like not the best play by DRX. Like having two isolated angles, not raised here, is very uncharacteristic for for DRX. Like I'm not certain what was going on here. I think that's some miscommunications. But then Buzz goes for a 2K and just yeah. wondering exactly how he should be playing this one. But he will not expect everyone to be offside. You know, he still has to clear these areas, fake the gate crash. Time is running so, so low. And a flash he hit. fully flashed himself as well, man. Stax is just finding his face, and yeah, not quite able to really play this one out. Just not enough time to No one is older than Lothar, you're trolling? <laughs> I thought as well. I thought as well. But no one is older than me in these boats, but there are some unicorns out there. With the double, uh, retake flank, but as soon as Soshin Yaturko went down... Hello, Rajo. That is a really tough round to recover. And a brutal one for BBL because that's where you're supposed to be favored. You've got the guns, you've knocked your opponents down onto a half buy. Yeah. You've got to be able to convert those. Dude, the quality of YouTube is just so bad, bro. Okay. Zest is using second time, right? I think this is the second time. I might have missed it once, but this is the minimum the second time he's using this lineup. A couple of in Mako and Buzz. And he gets so much value. Just just look at this. 150 creds. And it destroys a nanosorm and an alarm robot. I really feel like BBL just didn't learn from all of those rounds. They didn't communicate what is happening. 
Aslan definitely needs to change that up. Also, Aslan's Nano Swarm that he's putting on site is not where DRX are planting. Even if he did put it there, though, Zest has actually been shocking the plant position every time. I actually disagree with what the, what the caster said here because they do plant on default if they have problems with taking the site. Like, the default was planted twice. They plant for long if they have certainty that they have the site. So I do, so, I do yeah, think that Nano Swarm is fine. Being prepared for everything. The, the problem is the double doors. Like, that's where you don't need to put your shit because you need to readjust. Sure. So putting two Nano Swarms on B-side, like... From BBL's perspective, if I would be the Killjoy from BBL, my stuff was already destroyed on double doors because of the shock dart lineups, right? Then re I readjust. I see that there's no point in, like, we have issues with problems on holding B-side. We don't really care about double doors anymore at this point because we need to bolster up our defenses on the B-side. So I'm then readjusting and using all of my kit as a Killjoy to hold the B-side. I'm setting up one Nanoswarm here, one Nanoswarm here, and just make sure that I can stop the first plant for the players to play with me and rotate fast enough. But it's like half of the kids from Killjoy was just being destroyed by one shock dart, and they didn't adjust at all. Also, oh my god, what is this TP from the Yoru, man? Are you seeing this? What the hell is going on? This has to be a misclick. At the back of halls. Maybe another contact play in the works as well. Maybe off the turret because you can see. Would you change anything in BBL's comp? The comp is fine. Again, the same stuff. Oh my god. It's like it's like they 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 kind of knew what's happening. They wanted to adjust, but they did not. Look, Kushner, now I, I, I really feel like they just they didn't adjust at all to DRX executes. Like, this is this is something that DRX was showing them already, like, a few times, and they just don't do anything about it. Look, Kushner in the backside just gets demolished. The dagger from KO, the arrow, and the pull, the and the mollies, and the flash. Like, there's nothing you can do here. You, you can't leave with your TP because you're daggered, right? And you play in the position, like... Even though you know that DRX is using the dagger over, her, over there. Flash into the back of hall, so what do you do? He was the target and he has been found. You don't play in that position. You play in screens, maybe. You play on open up position on site, right? It's again going to be really oh, difficult. The pull, great there, actually, from Brave. Yeah, that's some good combos. The plant going down and, might offer them. and kudos to DRX, but of course this is like a... This sh I shouldn't even be talking about this, but I have to because I see other teams doing this problem, like, sorry, creating this problem for themselves. Mako is not planting when he has his Viper ult. Why? Because he doesn't want to get spammed when he's given the Audi Q. So someone else is, is planting. The problem is Mako, Mako stands in a position where the spike is not planted and yet he he dies because Sushni, I think, misheard the plant. It's so funny, man. It's so funny, man. Ah, no repeat from Buzz. Really well done. Buying time from RB. Again, the same that we have already, we have already seen a clutch like this. We've already seen exact repetition of this situation in a 2v1. This time it's a 2v2, right? This is a 2v2. Mm, round 11, 2v2, and there was already a 2v1, I can't remember the, the round of it, but we already have seen this exact situation, but Abi was standing in the cubby over here, in this spot. And the uh, Viper was standing exactly in jet position, so we have seen exactly this in a 2v1 already, and this time... RB plays exactly the same way. He plays patient. He knows that he cannot die. If he dies, the player in backside is completely overrun, right? So he just plays patiently here, right? Jump peaks. He kind of baits. He gets the info, see? He baits out for Buzz in the backside. And Buzz still has access to two updrafts. He could be using them as well. To like just kind of get the angles out but it's like bbl was disjointed i'm not certain why also turco has the stun for the entirety of it right they go on the side 
He gets the stun now. Okay, never mind. This is really bad for Tuukor. Like, he had no... Yeah, yeah, I agree. No, not using the stun here doesn't feel terrible. But the thing is, what is happening here... Look at the, one of the players just pushing Jet now. They completely... Because of the patience, they completely dismantles BBL ability to, like, read the room. Like, like BBL's opportunity here is only created if they go together and try to trade them themselves and then go into 1v1 or 2v1 if they played it perfectly and they didn't get unlucky. But because of the patience bought by RB, they couldn't do that and they got dismantled because they separated. So they literally, literally this entire clutch went into from 2v2s to 2v1 into 2v1. So by RB playing it patiently, he killed one player by not even shooting a bullet. Just biding their time back and forth. The dash as well into safety. So horrible for Turco. He's just been played with. Yeah, just nigh impossible to win. It's like a cat with a mouse. It yeah. is just heart-wrenching to watch. There was no way that Turco was going to be able to win that one. With a player behind and a player in front, and neither of them wanting to face him. Just threatening, teasing. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Buddha. If RB didn't clutch this pistol round on back of his insane skill and a little bit of luck, this map could have been actually very close. One more round is available to them in the half. The success that we've seen. But they got it going. Like that pistol round was so important. Third time using the shock that guys. This is so funny. This is so funny. Like, you will see that the Astra, who was never playing in the double dose position, either didn't get the memo from any of the other members of the team that the shock are landing on double dose, or he just straight up forgot. Look, look, look what's going to happen. They don't let DRX get comfortable when they're you know, just offloading a utility into a lot of these sites. There is no look at Brave's HP. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god dude too bad that they didn't use the uh didn't use the the snake bite there as well for that combo to hit this time but it did a bit of damage to brave so he wasn't quite aware that the shock was coming through nevertheless brave might not be expected right here yeah so if i'm the, if i'm zest and i see this kind of smoke i'm like oh okay i'm getting pushed here because there's no way an Astra places a smoke like that. That's really bad. Like, th this smoke is really bad. Because it gives so much space towards pushing out double doors for the attackers. Right? So if you're like, wait, is, why on earth is this Astra doing this smoke? Like, it's pretty bad smoke for everyone Shot involved. Good. So I'm just going to be aware that I'm most likely being pushed out here. Nevertheless, Brave might not be expected right here. So that that recon arrow pulled out there. I, I feel like it's a little bit uh, awkward, so but yeah. The game away now. <laughs> bangable there, but does get out with his Carol, is thank you so much for the eight months. Welcome back, buddy. Just to clear through to one side of mid. Well, look at this, DRX. Pull him in, pull him in, pull him in. Ah, Buzz, operator in his hands. Yeah, the uncertainty, like, BBL has to retake entire double doors area because of that, um, essentially, shock dart and uh, recon arrow that pushed away the Astra. And because of that, Sova is also checking, like, if someone came into water because they missed the missed that moment when the smoke from Astra, from the attacking Astra, smoked off this, this point here. So a lot of uncertainty in this area being bought by the setup, early setup uh, from, uh, from DRX. And because of that, Starks literally lurks into. This is a good this is a good moment to understand. Like round 12. Uh, this is a good moment to understand pressure creates opportunity for lurk. Look. Let, let's 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 go back to the drawing board. Let's start from the beginning. Shock to hit this time, but it did Early shock to right. push so away the Astra, right? Oh, sorry, early the recon arrow push away the player from the double dose, right? Because of the read of the push. Right? So that he goes back. Now Astra will smoke up. See? Now this smoke up here.
make certain that you can just lurk through the smoke from the opposing Astra. So now the Sova is being pressured. Just by doing this, what, just by doing this combo of Recon Arrow to push out the Astra, smoking up the, con uh, the connector, and using the drone, even if no one is pushing with this, it creates so much pressure that this Sova is now uncertain of his own position. Because of that, they will be able to put Lurks into Art because the pressure created over here in this area pushes out the players from their position. Pay attention to the mini-map, what's happening. Look at the Sova's uncertain, uncertain movement right now. He hides from the, from, the, uh, from the drone, and now he's gonna go back to check if someone is lurking through Link. See? Right now. And now he's uncertain. And the bridge has to check A main. They have no, no idea what's going on, and three players, four players right now from BBL have to gather towards B Link to be certain that they're not being pushed from through the combination of util that was happening in double dose. Because of that, Stacks now cre created space for himself by knowing that the timing of that pressure allowed him to do this. See this? This is a free kill just because Stacks played off the pressure that was created in double dose. It's so well played, you know? They need information, and guess what? That lurk timing pays off. Flash off to the corner. Fuzz staying yeah. safe. Stax gets a triple a kill just because he read the room. BBL a bit too timid. But this was not possible. This wouldn't be possible without, uh, without um, Zest's play on mid. That was enabled by the server. 14 kills, but just not enough to get his team into this first half. And everybody on BBL has just got to be thinking about their attack side. Yeah. Nothing to lose in this round for Kushner. He's going to try and make Are you happy with Derek's performance this match, even though they lost the second map? Yeah, the second map was really iffy, but in general, I'm, I'm pretty happy to see, like, the fundamentals that Derek are representing, uh, you know, because you can't see that from a lot of teams, unfortunately. He's got the heaven position held. Crossfire, RB, went close to the site. Yeah, this clown wasn't the best. Util will finish it off. A 9-3 half for DRX. Looking cool, calm, and collected, and firmly in control. I think for the Turkish fans, it comes down to, do you believe in curses? Do you believe in miracles? <laughs> Certainly. Gonna have to see some big things from BBL, I think, on this attack side as well. Try and get the <laughs> on that Yoru. He's putting up some amazing results. Like we said, 14 and 9 is the scoreline, but it's gonna take something very special, I think. Some curated plays across the board, but we'll throw it down to the desk to break down what we've seen of the first half. Thank you so much, gentlemen. And, uh, you know, expected dominant start there for DR. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Before getting thing where it was a fantastic execute toward getting been cooked. Yeah, 35, a little bit more. RX. Yeah, absolutely. I could not agree more with the desk. I think we've got to see something cooked up. DRX are often struggling on ascent. Look, guys, you know what DRX is struggling on ascent? Because it's the simplest map. Everyone can play on Ascent. Quote unquote. Is really the buffer they've earned in that first half. So, in the past, Josh, when we have seen the Euro working on that big stage, it's uh, it's often a ton of prep thrown by. Like Asc Ascent, yeah, Ascent is such a bad map for pro play, man. It's such a bad map for pro play because it's so so minimalistic. It's so choke pointy. It's worse than split. Like. Ascent is just so much worse than Split for pro play because on Split you have many possibilities of lurking, you have many possibilities of like creating pressure in a lot of space, you know, as an attacker. On Ascent, you don't have that. There's literally no way of doing that on Ascent unless you consider bottom mid being a lurk. You know, like Ascent is just the easiest map to play on and depends on just so much aim um dueling on the on mid if you play defaulty and if you don't have a good execution plan with a jet dash well then you will suck
definitely true. And we didn't really see too much cooked up on the defensive side. There was a set strat like that. And that's why people like it because it's so simple. That's why it's uh, the most li uh, one of the most liked maps in ranked. Get as many of these orbs as well into Kushina. Try and prioritize his ult. Is the plan here for Kushina just to send the gate crash towards flowers or something like that? You might be able to get Wait, wait, wait let me go back to the pistol round. So what's the what's yeah, the setup? Um, really Sushi using the same arrow side. as DRX on A main. Um, dagger from the defenders KO checking A main tagging two players. Didn't tag Yoru, but what is important here, and that's something that not many players do. I'm assuming that DRX is doing that. Like someone is communicating that someone is taking the orb, right? So someone who is not in danger right now, like, for example, Sova, or Astra even, can press tab to see who picked up the orb. Because then with the KO dagger getting the tag on the Sova and the Breach, and seeing that Yoru is taking the orb and got the orb, you are certain that you have, you have three players there. You know? Oh, what's to try and get as many of these orbs as well into Kushina, try and prioritize his ult? Is the plan here for Kushina just to send the gate crash towards flowers or something like that? You might be able to get. Also, why on earth Executioner has no flash? Did he use it early? See too much cooked up on the defensive. He has one flash. Side. Where is he using it? A set strat like that. He is using it here. Why on earth is he using it here? True. They literally just arrowed this. There was a set strat like that. I really dislike this. Like, they literally use an arrow to clear this area. So now he doesn't have the flash to actually execute. That's really, really, really weird. Uh, let's just say like that. I think you have to be ready for it, honestly, if you are DRX now. Listen, I've been following all the tips and tricks also I do think but that is I'm not saying this is a mistake if I would be personally coaching a team with a euro I would definitely try to convince my euro player to play uh classic classic armor uh clone flash because it's so much utility for pistol round it's actually nuts and here you can see you can see the the semi jet dash right semi jet dash the problem is that this TP doesn't have the move ability. So what is the difference here between a jet dashing into this position and Yoru TPing? Well, the difference is that the Yoru gets no info. Yoru will not check this area of the site while dashing. While the jet, if she get dashes into a smoke that she creates for herself here, she can side dash, check this corner, give the info. Yoru has no info. He's going in blind. And what's the worst thing is, He's going in with the stun, but this stun doesn't do anything about this position. So the Yoru TPs into this position without any certainty. Like, I'll be honest with you guys, the quality difference between the execute presented by DRX and BBL is like leagues, leagues of difference. You know? DRX not really biting. In fact, Stack's going for a, a very yeah. fast play into Pop Flash out of the smoke, one after the other. Imagine the how the how one could fix that. If the Yoru... <laughs> Stack was a little bit uh, awkward. In awkward position. The Yoru... If the Yoru would have had his own flash to flash for backside and then TP on the side, that problem would have been fixed. there on the pistol round. You know, fault line, flash, Kushina was supposed to follow it in in the gate crash. Uh, and that was going to provide a lot of pressure on anybody anchoring the back side. But Arby wasn't in a position where he got hit by any of it. And the rest of the DRX players were very fast to punish the rest of BBL who were trying to get in through the choke point. The timing was pretty much there from BBL, to be honest, but DRX is still just so... Oh, wait, what is this? What is this? And there was no plan, not really many kills, so BBL can't... Oh, this is just an anti-push on double doors in case B-Link push happens. Okay. Even get in a good position to Buzz just gets a kill early. Wait, what? Be honest, but again, look at the buy from from attackers, man. I am getting so pissed about this. So clean at dealing with it. Not a single piece of util being bought on Yoru. Not drawn on Sushni. 
No rebuy on Turco. And not really many kills, so BBL can't really even get in a good position to force this. It's just gonna be um, we're going to pay attention to DRX on, the board on, on DRX. Ascent. Because we, uh, DRX lost the pistol rounds. Oh, the, by the way, uh, let me finish this thought and then I'm going to talk about this. So DRX lost both pistol rounds on Haven. And I want to pay attention if DRX is doing the same mistake that BBL is doing with the utility. You know? But look, look at Stacks. Look at Stacks' face. He's gonna. The, the camera is a little bit delayed uh, towards the gameplay, so you, it's not super synchronized. But he is in range of this Yoru TP. Look at Stacks, how he gets like perked up once he sees that and starts communicating. Look at it. I feel like Brent, after their third place result at Champions, See? this team now he communicates that he saw the Yoru TP. A swagger about them. I don't know whether you noticed it as well, but just. Hearing them talk in the interviews beforehand and how they're discussing their team and their chances and stuff, there definitely seems to be more of that swagger of we mm. know we're a Three team. kill, man. Oh, and Stacks and, uh, just I don't mean No plan. The they're exactly. just we playing for like, oh, let me just be here exactly. and see if I can do anything. If you're aware of the play being made, there needs to be some sort of follow-up, but... Stacks was just tracking it down, waiting for it, but... Yeah, Q you're right, hoping this... that he just got through there for free. DRX playing with a ton of confidence behind them. So, how do you fix this as a, as a Yoru? You need to create a diversion to make sure that the player is not checking the corner. You can still get unlucky, but if you ever want to do this, you typically want to draw the player's attention to a different angle on the map to then make this TP. But he, they didn't do anything to, to like create even this perception. Well, you know, the evolution you know? that BBL are hoping to go for, I think, with the addition of their new IGL, adding a couple of more layers to their game plans. Unfortunately, had to go up against this absolute masterclass team that is DRX. Obviously, yeah. the series not over by any stretch of the imagination, but definitely a rough one as far as first round matchups go here in the lock and talk. Definitely very rough. But there's a long time before this BBL team has to, uh, you know, compete in the EMEA VCT, so. It's about going as deep as you can in the tournament and pulling away as many learning lessons as you can as well. Do you like River Carambit? No, not really. I don't really like the River uh, skin line. See if they have any plans. All right. Maybe you need to approach this round a little cautiously yourself. Kushner just bought Clown and uh and the Flash that he didn't have in the previous round. Watching the Gordon Ramsay shows, cooking stuff up. <laughs> they gotta be. The recipe book is in their hands. Gotta cook something up special, but it looks like all five players moving forwards. That's drone taken out Oof. nice and early. Buzz taking a tremendous amount of chip damage. Just has to back So that's just five players be long. And and, and, and and this is again like this play from the Yoru is the most basic play that you will do on B side. You know? It's like the most basic one. And it's something that Everyone used in rank the first moment someone played a Yoru on, on, on this map. And I do think that it's so easy to read by DRX, they should never do it. You know? Unless you still have other lines of support. But look, look at this. Breach has full util. And there's nothing being done. The only thing that BBL creates right now is the Yoru flashes for himself. There's no other piece of util being comboed. The, the stark contrast, I'm not saying this to bash on BBL, but it sounds like it. But that, it, that has to be said. The difference of quality of the executes is nuts. BBL uses Yoru flash, TP, and that's it. DRX was using Astra Pool, Snake Bite, Recon Arrow, Chaos Dagger, Right? Jet Dash, Smoke Up, Viper Wall. Holy shit. Right? You're just dry peaks. Kinda. This corner isn't cleared. It's a flash oh. play and Buzz. I don't know how much he could see in that scenario, but picks up the rifle. We'll reel it along, B long. Taken so much damage. Where was the the Sova arrow being used? Let me check something. Taking a tremendous amount of drone taken out nice and early. Buzz taking a tremendous amount of Because Sushni used the arrow. He used it on B side, so that doesn't that doesn't really do much. Because no one is even close to sight. You see this? Look. 
the arrow from from uh from Sushni was being used right now when the team is not even close to attacking site. Chip damage just has to back away and does have the shorty available to So it's like you didn't gain anything from it. Because people could already be repositioned on site. This corner isn't clear. It's a flash play and buzz. I don't know how much he could see in that scenario, but picks up the rifle. Reveal the long B long. Taken so much we are comparing a top four team from last year to a team that had to go for VRL to get to VCT if they are at the same level. Should the DRX should just unplug the stuff and leave? I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with that at all. Because if you are a partnered team and all of those people from BBL were playing in VCT before on many Turkish dif different dif Turkish teams, you should have at least a plan on an execute. There's no plan here. I mean, sorry, the plan the revolves around well, but let me do this TP. Exactly miss with a shorty at that kind of range. Now just trying to take this fight. Flash is sent through at a utility. And people at this at tier one esports of Valorant, I expect every team to play like Fnatic and DRX and one R Thieves. You know? Been a must win round for BBL is looking. It's looking like a it's looking like a save, to be honest here, Bren. You're 3v5. You don't want to give better rifles to them. I know you can't really call that in the moment. You've got to believe in yourself, but this is going to be a disaster for BBL here. Yeah. Brave spotted out. A bit of tag there. Nine Those were some shit executes from BBL, but DRX is most organized well, team, and VCT is difficult to execute like them. Look, I'm not saying that you have to have the play. same exact level as DRX on the DRX executes planning, point. but have some. And it, it, it's, and even you cannot really say that you cannot expect the tier one teams in esports in Valorant to have the same kind of level of executes like, so like the RX. Like yeah, that's just, that, that just line. says Absolutely we're okay with mediocrity. And still, Sorry, not even medi 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 mediocrity. It's just, not happy about that it's just not even basic. That's a hard one. It's got to be everything invested now if you are BBL. But it's scraps. Has that expectation been met in the last couple of years of Tier 1 Valorant you've been involved with? No. No, because, guys, since I started doing Valorant Esports, when DRX was called Vision Strikers, right? They already had this level of executes. And the other, only other team, when Vision Strikers was uh, in the scene, that had a similar level was Fnatic. Fnatic because they have Mini, they have Boaster, who work their asses off, to make this shit happen for the team, right? And since that moment, since two and a half years ago, when I was watching Fnatic and Vision Strikers play, the only team that I feel like went to their level right now, I would say, is 100 Thieves. You know? And that's about it. Although, I was pretty impressed with EG yesterday. They managed to scramble that rifle in the hands of Kushina, so... And so, yeah, I kind of forgot about Loud. My, my, my bad. Loud had really some good ideas on the exit as well, and but Loud even had even better uh, on quick on-feet thinking when it comes to playing advantages. Something that a fundamental play is, uh, is, like, is found in fundamental play, but I was really impressed with Loud quick thinking, like, oh, disadvantage? Let's push here. That was, like, really well done. Too bad. Optic? No, I don't think Optic had the same level of execute. Taking that A main control. One away now from Alt Kushner. If he can try to cook something up on the fly, that would be impressive. This angle of stacks is juggling. Can be punished, honestly. There's, if you are on the attack side, you can swing this from a high and low angle, but it's going to be juggling it. That is yeah. really rough timing there with the utility yeah. in his hands. St but what was the plan here? Stacks got really caught off guard with his pens down. Because, you see, look at Double Doors. Stax was meant to flash for the players peeking from Double Doors. But the timing was really bad. So he gets caught with his pants down. And you could say, hey, maybe you can just flash by not being, but by not exposing yourself and just bouncing it from here. But then the flash is not designed for the players on mid. So, in general, I don't agree with, with this kind of, like, setup. Because what, was, what had to happen before was... Zest's arrow should have cleared mid before um, KO takes the space on art for the flash. But. Be yeah. it. That is really rough timing there with a the utility in his hands, but. 
exactly what BBL needed. See that that, 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 that recon uh, that recon arrow was really needed first before Stax used that flash. Where is that orb going? I mean, just layers to this. Drop it down. Not too sure. BBL's answer though. In the midst of all of this now entering the mid round. I understand your point and sure I would love all teams to raise the floor, but I'm not surprised from what I see so far. I guess my point is that team like BBL is going to require a lot more work to reach that baseline. I think it's just I don't know. I, I just feel like this there's, there's a lot of problems. That BBL is not only it's not the only team that has those issues, you know? And nothing changes for the two and a half years. So what can you say? What can you do? Has to link up with the rest of his team now. Not this time, Jet! Hit your head on the fucking uh, uh, roof. They wanted to combo the flash and the recon? Yeah, but the thing is... That was bad timing because of that. And I feel like... But nevertheless, it's a little bit too risky to do it in that in that in that play unless it's like really first seconds, you know. But I understand there was a trap play, but it it required it required another player in art to make sure that Ko doesn't die. Otherwise, it's a little bit risky. Welcome to the big stage, BBL. Oh my word, what a brutal matchup. All right. Yeah, dominant showcase, DRX just diffing on the exit plans, but I have to say, if this clutch from RB wouldn't have happened, this could have been a completely different story. You know, completely different story, but uh, BB I have some insane aim, insane aim, and this could have been much closer if the any pistols would have been won by, by BBL, right? Like, you can see that if a team like BBL fixes their, their, like, strategical play, they can play on par with the best teams. That's the only thing holding them back, because mechanically speaking, they're good. But there's no optimization on utility, there's no optimization on economy, there's no optimization on the ultimates. You know?